Let's go. Boy KC Fowler, one half of the Fowler's podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast, taking a break from the gods of Egypt real quick because a certain Melanin Warrior caught my eye. So we're going to talk about Tetu Batul on this one, guys. Tetu Batul was born in Semen or North Gondor in the Ethiopian Empire in 1851. She was a very influential person during the anti-colonial resistance and founded the modern Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa in 1886. Empress Batul's father, Ras Batul, was part of the ruling family of Simon that were said to be descendants of the biblical king, Solomon. Wow. She was married about four times, and on her fourth and final marriage, she married King Menelik of Shewa, who would later become emperor of Ethiopia. Now, some may ask, why is this empress a melanin warrior? Well, that's due to her key role in the conflict over the Treaty of Washal with Italy. It was the treaty between King Menelik and Count Petro Antolini of Italy. The purpose of this treaty was to promote friendship and trade between the two countries. It was said that the same treaty Empress Tetu tore up, it inspired the emperor and other men to stand against the Italian. Which is, you know, showing how powerful our Melanist sisters are, how much influence they had and still have. Shout out to y'all. So all the talks finally broke down and Italy invaded. Empress Tetu marched to the north with the emperor and their imperial army. They even had a force of cannoneers at the Battle of Adwa. Now, this battle was the first in the Italo-Ethiopian War, where the Ethiopians defeated the Italians' invading troops on March 1st, 1896, stopping their expansion into Africa. Fun fact, by the end of 19th century, Europeans pretty much ran over every country in Africa except Ethiopia and Liberia. The emperor valued his wife as being one who would basically tell people like it was. If it was no, then that's what it was. No. But when Menelik's health made a bad turn in 1906, she began making all the decisions on behalf of her husband. So when this happened, she began to shun her rivals and put her friends and family in political power. The emperor slowed down Tetu's influence in court by selecting a Sabla Wangli Hilu as the heir presumptive, which is an heir whose claim can be set aside by the birth of another heir. And if you guys watch, uh, what's that show called? House of Dragon. You kind of see something like this in the in the effects of that show. But this is real life, so let's keep it going. They soon plotted against her and succeeded in removing her responsibilities and limited her to just take care of her husband. When he died in 1913, she was banished. She soon found her way back to a moderate role of power years later and lived out the rest of her life at their old palace next to the Intoto Mariam Church. When she was at the end of her days in 1917, she requested to go to Gondor. It was denied, unfortunately, and she passed away. Three months later, when she passed away, she was buried next to her husband. Empress Tetsu Patel, another amazing man and a warrior who had her country and her husband's back until the end. She resisted Italy and in part kept their land out of European hands and the Ethiopian people kept their culture, their spirituality. Everything about them was not touched due to the workings of this amazing, amazing melanin queen right here, guys. So this has been another episode of the Melanin Warriors podcast. Next week, we jumping right back into the guys of Egypt. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Y'all just going to have to sit back and wait. And hey, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. It's your boy. Yeah.